Hi, everybody. Thank you for everybody that stay and survive to be here with me. And so, if somebody don't know me, I am, my name is Dedi Meir. I'm professor in the Technion, which is the Technology Institute of Israel, similar to the MIT, something like that. We don't have literature. We have just accurate science. Um, few years ago, around three years ago, um, so four years ago, I got my own lab in the Technion doing a cancer biology, but my background, I have a master's in biochemistry, PhD in plant molecular biology, and a postdoc in cancer biology. And when I came back to Israel and I got my own lab to do cancer biology, I look how to bring plant back to my research because I thought it will give advantage. And then I started to do cancer biology. But from then, my lab spread to do a lot of cannabis research. So f today, from 45 people in my lab, I think 42 is working on cannabis. Three is not working on cannabis. Because if somebody asking me if I'm doing just cannabis, I have an excuse to say no. <laughs> so I'm just talking because it's not moving, that's all. Hey, I want two minutes spare after that. <laughs> it's not working, guys. No. Just a moment. Oh, it's upside down. OK. So I want to speak today a little bit about the entourage effect and what I think about it. People think that we need all the plant. Other people think that uh, one molecule synthesized can do the same effect and more accurate. And I think it's somewhere in between, and I want to talk about it and to show one example from my lab that fit to my philosophy that 50% is right and 50% is wrong. So we have the, enter the endocannabinoid system in our body that cannabis is influenced mostly through that system. I won't talk about it too much because I guess most of the people know. but. Our body built from cells, and the, the, the biology teacher in the grade five showed the cells like that, but usually it's look like that. And cell is the basic unit which call it life. So it's the basic units of all the live creatures, but even though it can be a self and can be an own entity that are alive, so these are cells that are crawling on the plate, and we have creatures that are one cell, like uh, yeast or bacteria. In our body, cells organize in tissues, and they need to communicate very well. So when I'm moving my hand, the cell from my brain sends signal to cell in my, mus my muscles to contract, and they must be very coordinate with other cells in order to have this contraction. So then cells in our body need to communicate between themselves very tightly and very organizedly, and then doing it by sending messages to each other. So these are two cells that sending messages. So one cell sends message, and the other one need to read it. And the way they are doing it, we have messengers, and we have receptors that know how to read it. In the endocannabinoid system, the messengers are the endocannabinoids, or the cannabinoids, and the receptors are the receptors on the endocannabinoid system. So the endocannabinoid system, usually we mention two receptors, CB1 and CB2, and I saw in the last two days at least five times this figure, and I think except, uh, except few times, people didn't mention that there are many other receptors. So there are GPR-55, GPR-18, and many receptors. I'm familiar with 32 receptors of the endocannabinoid system, and I'm familiar with 30, there is probably 50. Also about the endocannabinoid, usually we mention anandamide 2-AG, but there are more than 100 endocannabinoids. My lab today have the ability to analyze more than 120 different endocannabinoids in the blood. So we have a lot of messengers and a lot of way to read them. And this create a complicated system. Cannabis affect the system through the cannabinoids that it's creating. 
So we have in the plant, the, this unique plant, the ability to create a structure that is similar to the structure that our body creating and binding the same receptors. But again, in the cannabis, we don't have THC and CBD. We have at least 10 families of cannabinoids. And altogether, I know today to analyze from the plant 144 different phytocannabinoids. And these phytocannabinoids is actually, and we also have the tupins, I will skip it. And we have a lot of chemovars. In my lab, I have over than 650 different chemovars. Each one of them will have different profile of cannabinoids. And these cannabinoids is binding this endocannabinoid system and actually doing a bypass. Instead of getting very accurate message, our body doing it very, very accurately. When we move near a barbecue and we smell the barbecue, so small molecule from the barbecue is entering to our nose, going to our olfactory system that's signaling to the neurons to create a specific endocannabinoid that will bind the specific receptors that create appetite. But when we're smoking cannabis, we're floating this with a lot of compounds that binding different receptors and creating a complicated reaction. So when we're talking about the entourage effect, usually, at least what I'm hearing from people, and if you read uh, the papers, uh, uh, the first paper that were published by uh, Professor Ben Shabbat and Professor Rafi Meshulam, the idea is that one compound is not enough to give the signal to the receptors. So one compound is not strong enough, but if they are coming as a group, they can activate the receptors. So this is the entourage effect, the uh, uh, pamalia effect, the familia effect. So usually when I'm giving these talks in Israel, I said, it's like you're going in the beach and some kind of a guy is starting and coming and pushing you. Usually if he alone is, can't do anything, but if he's coming with his familia effect, then you're in a big problem. So it's a nice story, but it's not working like that in biology. Because this is backward. Just a moment. OK, because in biology, usually the ligand, the message, should fit to the receptors. We call it a lock and a key principle. It doesn't matter if you're coming with a lot of keys. You need one to fit to the, to the receptors in order to open it and to activate it. So it's not fit to the theory that you need a lot in order to push it. At least, usually, this is not the way it works. So why we have the entourage effect? Again, because we have many receptors and many signals that are coming together, operating many signals in the, in the cells, and we're getting a complicated reaction. So going and prove it, so, this is the, so if you thought that this is complicated, this is the real picture part of that. So going back to my lab, when we started to do cancer research, we took few different types of cannabis and few different cells, cancer cells, and we tried to see how it affects the cells. We read the papers by Manuel Guzman and Christine Sanchez that's sitting here, and so in breast cancer and glioblastoma that cannabis can create, apoptosis can kill the cells. I must say that this clock is killing me. It's like a bomb that's going down. I don't care about the organizer, no way that I'm finishing nine minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I, I was kidding, I was kidding. I, I'm on time, guys. <laughs> I was in, our, in the army, you know, time is time. <laughs> so there is a penalty not staying in, or not staying, standing in time. So we're growing the cells in the plate. So these are cells very low magnification, every dot there is a cell. These are colon cancer cells. And we create an extract. I was a plant biologist. I know how to do ethanol extraction. We create an extract, and we put very low amount on these cells. And surprisingly, they were all dead. We put extract number two, and they were all dead. We put extract number three, and it didn't affect the cells. So we saw a specificity between the types of the cannabis and it's affecting this colon cancer. 
We did it in breast cancer, and we saw very similar phenomena. But when we did it in prostate cancer, the extract that killed the breast cancer in the colon didn't affect the, um, the prostate cancer. The same thing with extract number two. But extract number three that didn't kill the colon and didn't kill the breast killed the prostate cancer. When we use colon cells without cancer mutation, it didn't affect them as it affects these types of cancer. So this is one way to do it. In order to take it to the next step, we said, OK, we don't know what is affecting them. We can do it in high throughput screening. So we can grow the cells in plate like that, but we also can grow them in plate that have many holes. And we can use equipment that can read in every hole, can take images from every hole. So this machine is incubator. The cell can grow live in it, but also can take a lot of images. So this is how we're doing it. We can put markers on that. So every time that the cell look red, it's dying. And every time that it's blue, it's alive. So you can see that on top, there is a control cells that are dying, cells that are alive. And what I want to show you here is these are melanoma cells. It's very similar to what I showed you before. You can see that there are every color, it's a different came over a different strain of cannabis, and you see that there is a bunch of cells that, bunch of extracts that not affecting the cells, bunch of them that killing 50%, and bunch of them are very effective. But when we try to align them according to the THC and the CBD amount, we saw that there is no correlation about the amount of the THC and CBD and the ability to kill the cells. So now we're doing another trick. We're taking this one one uh, types of uh, chemova, one types of strain, and we're extracting just the THC and the CBD. And we put purified THC and CBD from these strains on the cells. And even if we put 20 times higher, it's not affecting the cells. So what I learned from this, that it's not the THC CBD alone, or it's not them at all. But at least it's not the THC and the CBD alone. So if to complicate that, even if we take the same types of cancer, these are colon cancer, and you see on the upper type of the colon cancer, there are few strains that are very effective killing that, but on the lower one, even I've tried 650 different strains, none of them affect that. And it's the same thing with prostate cancer. So there is, even in the side types of the cancer, there are differences. So how can you look on it? We said, okay, let's look even narrow, more narrow. Let's look on cells with one type of cancer and one type of mutation that cause it to be cancer. We call it driving mutation. So I won't go to the details because I don't have time, but the idea is blue is without mutation. This become more and more severe. That The yellow is more severe. So we're starting, starting to check, and every bulk like that, it's a different strain. So you see that this strain didn't affect the cells, and these strains kill the cells in correlation to the mutation. When we find something like that, we're going deeper and deeper. And because I don't have any time, I have 4 minutes, 55 seconds. Who, count, who counts? <laughs> I, will, I will skip and I will say, we're going and looking deeper and deeper. And we prove ourselves that what we see is right. We're doing a rescue. We bring back the protein without the mutation. We check different strains that look very similar to the strain. We see just that this strain is very specific. We're going forward and forward. Then we're going to a mice model. And we check in mice model, and we see that this strain is also decreased the size of the tumor. It's very effective. When we're doing that, now I'm asking myself, do I need the whole extract, or do I need single compound? So my lab have the ability to read all the compounds in the cannabis, and it's very complicated. So in this strain, there is around 100 different compounds, cannabinoid, tupins, flavonoids. So what we are doing, we are running it on equipment, and we are fractionizing. We said, let's put 25 compounds in the first tube, 25 other compounds in the second tube, we fractionize it, and we're going back to the cell or to the mice, and we check it. And we see, in that case, that just one fraction, every color is a different fraction, and the red one is the whole extract. So we saw that we have a lucky, and just one fraction is working as the whole plant. 
So we eliminate 75% of the all the other compounds, and we're going another step forward. Said, okay, fraction two was the one that worked. Now I is left with 25 compounds. Let's fraction them now to five, 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 and five. And we're going on and on until we find the minimum compound they're doing the maximum effect. This is my slogan to the students. I don't care if it's one, seven, 20, or all of them. I want to know what is the minimum compound they're doing the maximum effect. Three minutes. Thank you. <laughs> I don't see it at all, like. Okay, so in that case, we, in that case, we find out that we need three compounds in order to get the full effect. Just three compounds. If you take one of them out, it's not working anymore. But if you have the three of them, you get a line exactly like the whole extract. So for me, this is a proof of concept of the entourage effect. It's not one compound, and it's not the whole extract. It's few compounds that activating different pathway that creating this effect. One of these three compounds, it's even unknown, don't have a name, we call it 331B. You know, my chemist analysis are very creative. <laughs> so one of them is even unknown. It's not a minor, it's almost 1% in this extract. But it's unknown, nobody looking on that. And if you're taking out, you won't get this effect. So if I'm looking on that even deeper, we saw, we know all the pathway, why it's degraded these active proteins, why it's sending it to degradation when the cell's dying. And one of the reasons is because you get a flux of calcium in the cell. So you see this is the whole extract. We could get flux of calcium. So we check the receptors. There is seven receptors on these cells from the endocannabinoid system. We suspect that one of them, TRPV1, is responsible to this flux. So we block the TRPV1, and we block just half of the flux. And again, if you look on the cells, when we're blocking, this is the whole extract, this is blocking TRPV1. We block just killing part of them. One minute. So actually, this for me, it's like proof of, con of concept. One compound, and we already know which one, is binding TRPV1 and starting a, a flux of calcium. The other one binding different receptors, and all together you get enough power, enough things that happen in the cells that killing these cells. This is how I see it operate, and this is what my vision to the next year that we find, define which compound is doing what, how they're binding, which receptor they are binding, and how we're getting this effect. So just say thank you to my. Okay, this is what I just said, <laughs> 30 minutes, 12, 10. So just saying thank you to this amazing group that's working with me. This is my lab. So this is Shirley Berman that did all the cannabis analyzing. This is Liran Baram, Dr. Liran Baram that did all the cancer research. This is Dr. Gil Levitus that did the mice work. Thank you very much.